Mike Tomlin and Kevin Colbert were at the NFL owners meetings, which they got a chance to talk to Pittsburgh media about what the Steelers are doing next. They talked about a lot of different things, but one of the more important ones is what's coming next with the Steelers free agency. They're not done, and they even indicated they have one more spot to fill, of course, that being the position of strong safety. But they, what's really interesting is they gave some hints as to who it might not be that they're targeting right now and who it might be that they're targeting in free agency to fill that spot. I'm Chris Carter of the Locked On Steelers podcast. Joining me today will be Noah Strackbean of Steelers Talk. You know him from a lot of different places, Sports Illustrated. So much track is amazing. We're, ha we're happy to have him on. I'm Chris Carter, the Locked On Steelers podcast. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Steelers, your daily Pittsburgh Steelers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome to the Locked On Steelers podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter, bringing you your daily dose of all things to the Pittsburgh Steelers. As always, you can find us on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, and YouTube. If you're watching this video on YouTube, hit the like button on this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by hitting the subscribe button there. If you want to help us out even further, give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts with a positive comment. Do both at the same time, and we get you a shout-out at the end of the show. Today's episode is brought to you by BetOnline.net. Bet Online has you covered this season long, all season long, with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. So base place your wager on your next sporting event by going to Bet Online, where the game starts. Joining me is Noah Strackbine, my man Noah. Now, if y'all if y'all don't know Noah, first of all, go follow him on Twitter at Noah Strack. He does a great job. He's at the Steelers facility every day throughout the season, on the off season, doing everything. So I'm so glad to have my man here because we talk so much stuff about what's going on just on the side watching practices all year long i'm really pumped to have him on the show no what's going on man what's up chris i appreciate you having me on it's been a while of sitting and watching waiting to be the next guest here on locked on so i'm excited <laughs> to be here well i'm excited to have you here but it was really exciting for a lot of people to kind of to get to, to more words from kevin colbert and mike tomlin because the steelers have been through their first and kind of second waves of free agency they made the big waves mitch trubisky uh miles jack james daniels all those guys and pretty much we have an idea of what the Steelers roster is going to look like going into the NFL draft. But Kevin Colbert did make it clear that they know that their start, their last starting position they don't have addressed yet is strong safety, which everyone can agree to. And he did say that there'd be other positions that would still get addressed moving forward. But what's truly interesting here, Noah, is what he said, and I'm pulling this from Brooke Pryor, our, one of our guests, and of course, Brooke Pryor of ESPN. She was on, on site to talk about this, and she said, uh, she quoted Kevin, Kevin Colbert saying, quote, our preference is to always add players coming off of their first contract or as close to their first contract as they can be. Now, that, of course, talking about, you know, when, when, you know, he was just coming off of talking about how strong safety wasn't, you know, what was still a position of concern for the Steelers and free agency. That puts a dent into the theories that Tyron Matthew, the honey badger, would be in this conversation, Noah, because Tyron Matthews way far off of his first contract. He was with the Arizona Cardinals for about five years. Um, then he was with Houston. Then he was with Kansas City for three years. So like, he's on his really third or fourth contract by now, and he's about to turn. 30 years old going into this season is this a bad sign Noah you know is he definitely out and if he is it should this be a warning for all Steelers fans that man things are about to be rough or is there something else at play here that we're missing so it, it definitely sounds like it does rule Tyron Matthew out of the conversation he's about to hit his fifth contract that contract I think the underlying or the reading between the lines here is Kevin Colbert was basically saying we're not paying a boatload of money for a strong right. safety. Tyron Matthews is worth a boatload of money. Anybody coming off that first contract that's hitting this third wave of free agency, not usually worth a lot of money. So right. I, I would say it does eliminate Tyron Matthew. But the whole, are they concerned or should Steelers fans be concerned? I don't think so. I think it kind of alludes to they kind of hope Terrell Edmonds continues to just sit there and become cheaper and cheaper so that they can just be like, all right, well, we'll just bring Tyron to our – Terrell Edmonds back. I do think it's a, that's very much a possibility. And I said this at the start of free agency. I'm like, it just, the fit makes too much sense. This guy's yeah. 25 years old. 
never gets hurt, knows your system. Minka Fitzpatrick loves the guy. He says they have great chemistry. He's been solid. I know a lot of Steelers fans hate Terrell Edmonds because he doesn't have 2,000 interceptions every year. But the, the bottom line is he's helped them eliminate tight ends. He's helped cover running backs. He's helped cover receivers. And he's helped fill the job solidly at strong safety. And like you said, he's not going to cost you that much money because no one's going to look at that and say, hey, we're going to pay this guy, you know, $12 million next year because we, we saw that only the Steelers really know how valuable this guy is. So I look at this as a major opportunity. But another guy that's still out there and floating around is DeMonte KZ. Now, KZ is kind of a guy who's bounced around a little bit. He's been playing more safe, more, more, more safety, and he's been known for some of his harder hits. He just got done with the Dallas Cowboys. He's a little bit closer to that range as well. You know, Terrell Edmonds is definitely coming off his first year con his first contract in the NFL. But KZ, he was drafted by the Falcons. He played there for four years, played one year for the Cowboys, and now he's a free agent again. So he's a little bit closer. Granted, he is 28 years old, so he's a he, you know, he's considerably older than Terrell Edmonds and he'll be 29 at the start of next season but is that a guy that you think supersedes Edmonds in importance here or do you think the team's true plan should be to stick to the guy that they know and know and who knows them I I personally think it's Edmonds I don't I don't know why you would go around him like just everything you just said you just said how he's gotten better he never gets hurt Minka Fitzpatrick loves him on top of that everybody complains about his coverage skills he's got back-to-back -back seasons with two interceptions that's not terrible for like pretty much the last resort here in your coverage options. KZ, he's good. He's a different player. He's more yeah. like that splash guy. You know what yeah. I mean? Like he's going to make a lot of plays for you, no doubt, but he'll also make a lot of mistakes for you as well. I don't think he's as fine tuned as Edmonds is when it comes to just like an all around strong safety role. And like you said, he's 28 years old. So why would you, why would you reach there instead of just saying, we know this guy He's probably not going to be expensive. Minka loves him. Why don't we bring him back? I, I would say there is some worry with me, though, because anytime you re-sign that guy, that guy that you weren't 100% sold on, half the time it doesn't work out and you just wasted money on a guy that you already knew wasn't the answer. Right, and, and that's certainly a question to have right here. And as far as Terrell Evans, though, but here's the thing. How much money would they be wasting? Because – He's looking, he's going to look around and say, well, I'm not getting this big contract from somewhere else. What if I go here? And you could give him an, a two-year deal and be like, hey, Terrell, this deal's not going to keep you around here that, that long. So that way, if you blow up with us, then you'll get your shot to hit free agency again and make your big money someday. And by then, you'll be 27 years old, which is right in your prime to make another big deal in the NFL. So, again, I think it works out. Another difference here with DeMonte KZ is the size. The guy's 5'11", mm -hmm. you know, pushing 180 if, you, if, if you're lucky. Terrell Edmonds is 6'1", pushing 220. That's a much bigger size. That's, a, that's, why, that's why Terrell Edmonds has been so good at working against tight ends. And you combine that with his athleticism. He's one of the, he's one of the better athletes when you look at his pure combine performance, his change of direction, his his ability to to have explosion and burst. You look at the at, at that those abilities. That's why the Steelers value him so much, even though he doesn't have you know the the elite playmaker turnover ability. And I think if he did, that guy they wouldn't be able to pay him right now because he'd be too, way way too expensive, or they'd have to choose between him and Micah Fitzpatrick. But like you said, no, and I've been I've been big on Terrell Edmonds for for a while on this very show. I just it makes a lot of sense to get the guy that you know and the guy that vibes well with your whole defense. I mean, heck, you and I saw all 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 practices all season long. Him and uh, him and um um excuse me, Austin Terrell, uh, the the uh, Terrell Austin. I don't, I don't know why I called him Austin Terrell. Terrell Austin, the new defensive coordinator when he was the secondary coach. Oftentimes, when Terrell Edmonds would take a break, he would go right he would go right to him and talk to him, and they'd go over what was going on. Just a lot of chemistry there makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it definitely does. And Terrell uh, with. Terrell Austin getting a bigger role, it's only going to mean that he's going to have more faith in those guys that he already knows. You put somebody new out there, you know what I mean? You're asking him right. to go adjust to learn this new guy. If it's Edmonds and Minka back there, he's already focused. He's, okay, defensive, secondary, set, we're fine. I'll work with the rest of it. I'll figure out the rest of it. Because there's a lot of moving pieces in his defense this year. So you add another one, you're just, you're taking a risk. That's what you're doing. You're taking a risk. You absolutely are if you're if you're going outside this. So again, the Steelers they haven't been too risky. I mean, you even look at this free agency period. As much as people like the the moves, they've all been very safe 
smart move to set themselves up for a better chance in the NFL draft. So that being said, what's coming in the NFL draft? We'll talk a lot about today. It's Mock Draft Monday, so we will have a Mock Draft Monday winner in the third segment. But next, I want to get to Noah's picks because he gave me a Mock Draft that I think is very interesting for some of the quarterback talk going on right now. But first, we're going to talk about one of our great sponsors, Built Bar. This is a time of the year where everyone's starting to give up on your New Year's resolutions. And if you are, stop it. You got an easy way to help you get around. You want to eat something good and tasty, but you don't want to eat something that tastes like leaves. Well, guess what? I got the great answer for you. It's Built Bar. If you haven't tried their new Puffs flavors, you're missing out. They're the best tasting Built Bars out there. They're like protein infused marshmallows. They're fluffy, marshmallow, and they're a treat. They're covered in 100% real chocolate. You can get flavors like cinnamon churro, coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie. And if you don't even want the, 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 uh, the Puffs flavors, you can get the regular Built Bars, which are also covered in 100% real chocolate. And they're all low in calorie, but high in protein. Most Built Bars contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Compare that to the average candy bar that has around 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. That's a much better option for you, and it's tasty to boot. There's so many flavors to choose from, from double chocolate to coconut almond, peanut butter brownie, raspberry, cookies and cream, salted caramel, and mint brownie. There's so many flavors, and every month they're coming out with new flavors that you could check out by going to their website, Built.com. So go to their website, Built.com, and when you do, be sure to use their promo code LOCKED15. That's L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5 LOCKED15, and you'll get 15% off your next order of Built Bars when you visit Built.com. Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm Chris Carter, he's Noah Strack, and we are here talking about the NFL draft and what the Steelers need to do. Now, granted, they still haven't really budged in free agency, but this gives us the real big hint that, okay, they are probably going to sign someone of, uh, of, of interesting continuity. Before we get to your mock draft here, Noah, I, I want to ask you this question. If they bring back a Terrell Edmonds, I've been looking at this possibility of using that 20th pick or if they trade back, which they normally don't do, but if they do, they, you know, looking at that safety class, because there's some really good safeties in, in this class. Lewis Seen of Georgia, Jaquan Brisker of Penn State. They don't stand a chance at Kyle Hamilton. I'm not throwing him in this mix. But <laughs> you get one of those guys that hit, that fly around, that make plays on the ball, and you give yourselves Minka Fitzpatrick, Terrell Edmonds on a team-friendly contract, and a rookie and a, and a new top rookie, you know, first or early second round rookie safety that you could say, we're going to come out here and give you this three safety package, but we like all three of the safeties. We're not throwing one out there that's just like Daniel Sorensen or something like that. What Do you, do you think that's a realistic possibility, or is that something that's like, ah, that's not a stealery move right now? So uh, there has been a lot of like defensive what-ifs that I've run through, a lot of other people have run through, and every one of them seems like a little bit unrealistic for one reason or another, like the Jordan Davis hype at one point, yeah. like, ah, chances are he's not going to make it there. Dude, there are definitely safeties that if they will or are available at 20 and the Pittsburgh Steelers feel maybe there's nobody else worth it right now, you should 100% draft. And another name that you didn't mention that maybe – a sleeper here know, late in the first round, Daxton Hill. Yeah, a lot of people like Daxton, yeah. I think he is a monster. He could play the slot as well as the safety. He's real physical, plus he's a ball hawk. I, I just think he's a total package. So I, I, I agree. I mean, it's the NFL. It's just like a running back. Like, you need as many defensive backs, like true defensive backs, as you could possibly have right now, especially in the AFC. Uh, it, it does make sense. But I will say that. A lot of that will depend on how many quarterbacks come and go before the Pittsburgh Steelers are up. Exactly, because that's the big question, and I keep saying this all the all – if they sit at 20, they don't have to trade up, they don't have to trade back. They sit at 20, they will get a player they definitely like. There's not 19 players – there's not less than there's not less than 20 players that they look at this draft and say that guy is worth a, a, a 20th overall pick in the NFL draft and would fit right into what the Steelers are trying to do right now. Because even if you take two of the quarterbacks off the board, even if you take, you know, five offensive tackles or five edge rushers or two linebackers or all three cornerbacks, there's going to be somebody that falls. Out. Like That's how you get Jordan Davis to fall to you. But even if you take Jordan Davis and another defensive tackle off the board, one of those positions will yield a really talented player. But who will it be is the question. Now, Noah, getting into where you think things will go, we're going to pull up your mock draft. 
here we go from all Steelers this is your 2022 mock draft in its current form. You have the Steelers with your first pick. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can see the imagery that we put up. Um, but if you're listening, he picked Desmond Ritter first pick round 20, no trade back. This is interesting. A lot of Steelers fans like Desmond Ritter, but prefer him in the second round. What get, makes him a first round quarterback? And in your mock draft doing that, did you put him above either Malik Willis or Kenny Pickett or were they already gone by the time you were picking? Yeah, so they're they're already gone. In my mind, Malik Willis is going to Detroit at two. I've been hearing that since the senior bowl. Mm. A lot of people are telling me, hey, like, you know, Malik might have all this interest from all these other teams, but the Detroit Lions love Malik Willis. And especially once Aiden Hutchinson kind of slid his way into that first spot, I think that that solidified things. I also think that Kenny Pickett's gone by six at Carolina. Mm. I just uh, quarterbacks we've seen it now with Desmond Ritter and Matt Corral and the Pittsburgh yeah. Steelers taking everybody and their mother out to dinner it's because <laughs> this is this is it this they is are the taking NFL draft out. yeah and they're taking all the quarterbacks out because quarterbacks no matter how good or bad they are get more hype than any other position heading into the draft they are always those guys the teams are like well we can't pass up on that guy you never know I, so I think those two are gone um I believe right now Desmond Ritter slides to 20 I think the Steelers love him I also think that everything that Kevin Colbert and Mike Tomlin have said to this point has all just been like, yeah, guys, we don't really care that you know that we are going to draft a quarterback. We're going to draft a quarterback. That's what we're going to do. I think Ritter, he's a developmental piece. He lets Mitchell Trubisky do his thing for at least a season. But he could come in here and compete, at least push everybody else up against the wall and say, you got to earn this. And it, it'll be good all the way around. Is he the answer? I don't know, but it'll be good all the way around. It certainly will be a question here. And I think one, he fits the athletic profile, right? That you want. He's 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 able to move. He's also bigger. You know, Malik Willis, he's like a little over six foot, but Desmond Ritter, he's six three. Like and he's 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 like, you know, oh, he's like 210, 212, or something like that. And he's a guy who can take a hit. He can, he has a bit of an arm. He has the mobility. You like that those, those packages about him. It certainly would be an interesting pick. Moving on to your next pick here. You got Sky Moore, the Western Michigan wide receiver at 52. He's been hard for me to land in mock drafts because a lot of time he will be gone by 52 uh, for the for the Steelers there. And it's really interesting to me to, to, me to see him there at that position. But, you know, there's, there's obvious ties. Uh, you know, he he played at Shady Side Academy with Mike Tomlin's son, caught passes from him. Uh, you know, we, we've seen we've seen that there's that the Steelers love their second round receivers. Heck, there was a, a four year span where Juju, James Washington, Chase Claypool and Deontay Johnson. The only one who wasn't a second round pick was Deontay Johnson. And he was an early third round pick. So, uh, you know, there's that that would fit the mold of what the Steelers have done more often than not in the past few years. What do you like about Sky Moore? Uh, everything that you just said. Sky Moore <laughs> is the dude that Mike Tomlin has loved from the beginning. They have a relationship um, at the NFL Combine. All he could talk about was growing up with Mike Tomlin's kids. Um, I, I think he fits there. He balled out against Pitt. Kevin Colbert and Mike Tomlin, what chances him. are he saw that. Yeah, and they have, they have their radar on him. I think a lot of those other wide receiver options are going to be gone, like George Pickens, Christian Watson, um, Justin Ross at some point. And Sky Moore will be the beginning of that second row. I, I agree there are a chance that he doesn't make it to 52, but I think that once things start rolling, he's a guy that might slip and just slide back a little bit more, just like Randall Moore did, I believe, last year, two years ago, where mm -hmm. teams were really hot on him, then they fell down, and he ended up in Arizona. I think Sky Moore could be the same way. It would be interesting to see your third round pick at 84 the raw was the offensive tackle Nicholas Petit Frere from Ohio State. He, he was a guy who, interestingly enough, early in the draft process, he seemed like he was getting placed a lot higher when people started to see his measurables and what things were paint, painting out. He's dropped a bit in his stock. And now he's like, if you look at the draft network, he's like 71st overall as a prospect. I believe he was as high as like in the. 40s at one point or something like that earlier but i mean this is a guy 6'5 316 played played in the big 10 with ohio state so like he has the pedigree you're looking for he has the size you're looking for but i'm intrigued to see what you think he would bring to the offensive tackle position that could really help the steelers so i i think i'm like the minority on this but everybody seems to think that the steelers need to add an interior offensive lineman and they have like 14 of them so they might as well <laughs> just go get a backup tackle that has starting potential because right now, if you look up the Steelers depth chart, their backup tackle is Chaz Green. That Ooh, is, that's that's alert, not good. Red alert. It's not good. So you go get a guy um, like Petit Ferrer, who at one point was considered a first round pick coming into the 2021 season. He switched to the left side. People said he had a ton of potential. He just didn't really pan out. Then his measurables were questionable. 
Um, he still brings that potential. And he'll come into the NFL with the, as a guy who could have the upside of a starter or the immediate impact of a quality backup. Either way, the Steelers need both of them. I don't think that the offensive line is as pressing as it was a week ago, and that, that kind of allows them to take a risk on a guy. That certainly would be interesting to see, um, you know, if they took that shot on that. Because I've also said, you know, they, they I wouldn't rule out offensive tackle or interior offensive lineman in the first round if if yeah. if if one of the right guys fell to them and they're like, you know what, that's the best player available. We're taking him because um, they want to make this offensive line important again. They want to make this offensive line a crucial part of this team that can push people around, get Najee Harris space to run, and give Mitch Trubisky time to throw slash whoever is the quarterback next year. Let's run through your last last four picks here in the fourth round. Danny Gray, another wide receiver this one at smu uh round six you go with myron tagabailoa amosa and edge rusher out of notre dame and then your seventh round picks safety jermaine waller out of virginia tech cole turner tight end out of nevada uh with your final seventh round pick okay if you had to pick one player from there that you find the most intriguing to how they could spin themselves into an important player for the steelers in the coming years who would you pick among them so i my top two would be Danny Gray and Tagavola Amosa because Danny Gray, I think, is a guy who he's a speedster. He wasn't really used well at SMU. He's a Juco transfer. He has so much upside, like quality tier one top wide receiver on a football team upside. I think he could be a return man. He ran a 4-3-3 at the NFL Combine. He's got great hands. He's real physical. He's like a later round John Dotson. And then uh, Tagavola Amosa. He did pretty much nothing at Notre Dame. He had so much potential coming into college. He did not pan out, but he has all of the physical attributes that you need. He just didn't, it, nothing clicked. And I think it could click in the NFL. He's he's a dude that goes 110 miles every single play. And as a third edge rusher, that's all you could ask for, really. I mean, the, the Steelers, here's, here's the other thing is the Steelers, they have their starters at edge rusher. They're looking for their depth guys. So if you had a guy who was green and had all the athleticism you want and you just needed to kind of train him up, that'd be one of the positions to find that guy. And again, you know, when you find guys like that in the NFL or going into the NFL who just measure extremely well, but just haven't clicked though, that those are oftentimes the guys that end up being your steals because, you know, if, if you get that guy to click and that guy's a Supreme athlete at that position and you paid nothing to get him. That's awesome. So two very interesting picks there. I also think the Steelers could be in line to double to double up at wide receiver. Um, and they, they need some speed for sure. Uh, there's no doubt they, this this team needs to get a burner out there for Mr. Trubisky to stretch the field, open up space for the rest of the team to work. So with that, that's Noah's mock draft. But we got your mock draft coming. We have a mock draft money winner, winner to announce still on this very show. So stay tuned for for that but first we got to talk to you guys about athletic greens one of my favorite sponsors that we do here our next partner is something that i use every day athletic greens has this product called ag1 and i but for a while i didn't have time to prepare all my meals meal per meal plan i mean no will tell you we're always running out the door to the steelers facility for, for a practice in five minutes or for availability so when you're doing that sometimes you don't get to properly plan out the nutrients you need every day but with ag1 you're going to have better health, gut health more energy and opt an optimized immune system and as an asthmatic i'm telling you i've been breathing a lot easier for the past few weeks that i've been using it this has been about a month that i've used it and it's really helped me it doesn't taste like it's super healthy or as heavy to gulp down it's just a mild tropical taste and i really look forward to drinking it every morning before breakfast with one delicious scoop of athletic greens you're absorbing 75 high quality vitamins minerals whole food source superfoods probiotics and aptogens to help you got, start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging, all the things. So right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition, especially heading into the flu and cold season. It's just one scoop of cup of water and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. It costs less than $3 a day and contains less than one gram of sugar and supports better sleep quality. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is, is visit athleticgreens.com slash NFL Network. That's athletic, athleticgreens.com slash NFL Network. And when you go there, you'll be taking, over, uh, taking ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance.
Back here on the Locked On Steelers podcast, I'm Chris Carter, your host here. And here with Noah Strackbein, we're talking about the NFL draft coming up. Noah, I want to ask this before we go into our final mock draft Monday talk here. There's one position that I think the Steelers should address at some point, whether it's the NFL draft and free agency. And that's the number two running back spot. How do you think they should address it? There's guys still floating out there in free agency that you probably sign for cheap because, again, it's the later part of free agency. You're not you're paying a whole lot. You can get a guy like Marlon Mack and grab him off and say, hey, play behind Najee Harris, just, just do well. Or should they wait for the NFL draft to get a guy in like the fifth or sixth round and say, hey, you know, we're taking an Anthony McFarlane shot in this guy. But the run game is supposed to be important this year. I just think that it would help to have a veteran behind Najee Harris who isn't Benny Snell or Anthony McFarland that can get things going. But what say you? I, I agree. And Marlon Mack has been my dude since day one. He yeah, fits I like perfectly, perfectly in what the Pittsburgh Steelers need as a running back, too. He needs an opportunity because he got pushed to the side with Jonathan Taylor in Indianapolis. And he, he's a better Benny Snell, so you could still use Anthony McFarlane. Because, I, I mean, I might, again, might I might be the only one who thinks this, but I think Anthony McFarlane still has some upside. I, I think he does especially in Matt Canada's offense. So I think Marlon Mack would be a dude who comes in here, fills that number two role perfectly, but doesn't take away from McFarland. I mean, since day one, that's been my option. I think that free agency is the move. I would not be surprised if they waited until after the NFL draft, though, to grab a guy because they just want to weigh all their options. That, that would be a very Steelers move. They, do, they, yeah. they don't they don't force themselves into situations that they then try will know they'll, they'll bank, they might regret later. They want to play it safe. That's why they've offered a lot of these deals that are very team friendly. And that's where well, that's just that's the Kevin Colbert playbook. So without without further ado, we're going to get right into our mock draft Monday winner. And this week's winner is. Scott Pavel. Scott's a guy who's been around for a long time and one of our longtime listeners, been a guy that's been out there uh, doing a lot of things. But Scott had an interesting draft here, Noah. And so congratulations, Scott, by the way. Yes, I, I trust me. I read all of y'all posts every time y'all post. It's just there's like hundreds of y'all. So it's tough to get to y'all every week. So when I don't pick, you don't take it personal. I know that Scott does it because he and I have talked and he's a good guy. But let's get into Scott's draft here, Noah. Now, he started off very interesting going Andrew Booth Jr., cornerback out of Clemson. There's a lot of people who say, that's my guy, that's my guy, that's my guy. Noah, that's my guy. I, I, I love me some Andrew Booth Jr. I watched him in the ACC for years, tearing it up. The Steelers, I know people are saying, well, you can't draft a cornerback after the Steelers. That's a death sentence. But they don't often get the chance at one of the premier corners of an NFL draft. And this year, there's Ahmad Sauce Gardner, there's Derek Stingley Jr., and there's Andrew Booth Jr. You get any one of those three, and you rockin'. Is this realistic? Do you think that he's gone by then? Or do you also think that eh, there's more important things to do than cornerback right now? No, there's nothing more important than Andrew Booth. There's not. Like, I'm with <laughs> you 100 There's nothing. If Andrew Booth is on the board, it's like Jordan Davis. Jordan ba Davis is on the board. You don't even think about any other position. You just draft Jordan Davis. You draft Andrew Booth. I think Andrew Booth's the best cornerback in this draft. And Ooh. I think one day he's – Sauce Gardner is a baller. And I think he will continue he to do very well in the NFL – but Andrew Booth didn't have that opportunity at the Combine or his pro day to say, right. yeah, hey, guys, everybody's overlooking me. You need to relax. Um, realistic? I, I don't know. That's real up in the air right now because a lot of teams are saying – or a lot of mocks are saying he's gone in like the first 15 picks, and a lot of them are saying he's a bottom of the first round guy right now. Yep. And I think that, that that'll that change that, – that'll, that'll mix up in the coming days and weeks. But right now, definitely possible. It's always one of the fun things when you're looking around for all the different draft sites and their research and their experts who they got put things put together. Because if you go to Pro Football Focus, Andrew Booth, he's like the 27th best player. He'll be there at 20. He'll be there. He might be there in the second round if you wait for him long enough. But if you go to the draft network, they have Derek Stingley as, as the number six prospect. And then Andrew Booth Jr. is the number seven prospect. And then um, Ahmad Gardner. So like you said, people are all over the place. But that's why I still like the pick. If he does fall to 20, Sprint to the podium, get your guy. That's your CB1 for the next eight years. Like, I, I, yeah. I truly see him being a difference maker at the cornerback position. But Scott's next pick next, next pick here was Jahan Dotson out of Penn State, of course, the wide receiver. A, a good receiver, lit, lit, lit it up at Penn State for years. Uh, you know, this is a guy, especially last year, for I'd say through like about like eight weeks of the season, he was we were really pushing Jordan Addison to be a potential candidate for the Bolitnikoff award, award. But uh, Jordan Addison had Kenny Pickett, so that sort of helped things a little bit there. Uh, but Jahan Dotson, by, by all accounts, a, a, a guy with a good head on his shoulders, an athletic receiver, 
and would get the Steelers back into the situation of saying, we got three receivers that are young, hungry, and can move. Oh, yeah, no doubt. John Dodson, this is look at these first two picks. If they happened, every Steelers fan, myself included, would say, yep, that's the easiest answer in the whole world. John Dodson is six foot. He plays like he's six five. He plays bigger than Chase Claypool. Um, he's a speedster. He has some return ability. He can play both slot and the outside. Mm-hmm. I mean, the, like, just like you said, Jordan Addison, Addison was the best college football receiver last year. Jahan Dotson was like 1B. And it, if he had a better quarterback and a better offensive system, that, that would be a lot closer than than people think. Yeah, that, that's certainly an interesting thing there. But, I mean, the other part of this is that because so many wide receivers tested amazingly, you know, you got Chris Olave, you got Garrett Wilson, you know, Sky Moore's up there, the Christian Watson, you know, where he where he might go. There's some people that feel that like Jahan Dotson might, might be that second-round pick. Some people feel like he's still that first-round pick. It's going to be interesting to see how these wide receivers fly off the board and when they fly off the board. because That always plays a factor here. Now, this third pick is very controversial, in my opinion, because there's a lot of people that really like Falale, but there's a lot of people that, that hate Falale. And, of course, I'm talking about Daniel Falale. I just said that name three times really fast. Um, offensive tackle out of Minnesota. If there's nothing else you could say about Falale, he is huge. He's, what, six foot eight, 383 a behemoth offensive tackle. He's a guy that you look at and you say, you could plug him at right tackle and just say, Hey, either you're going to have to go through him or you got to go around him, which means really gonna have to go around him. Cause that's a big man to move. But yeah. there's some people that think he does. He's not athletic enough. Noah, because he's not, he doesn't move laterally. Well, he still has to work on his footwork. He's very raw. He didn't play. I believe he didn't play high school football offensive tackle. So he has to kind of develop more of those natural skills. Is this worthy of a third round pick for the Steelers? Or, or is this a bit of a reach here saying, ah, there's other guys that you can get who are more complete players and can help you right now. Yeah. I, I'm not a big uh, follow and I'm not going to say that more than one time <laughs> fan, I watched him at the senior bowl and he did not really look good, especially for a guy that immediately stands out, obviously, because he's massive. Um, I will tell you this. I, I talked to him at the senior bowl and the combine and he didn't meet with the Steelers either, either place. So I, I think they see what everybody else sees. And that's a guy that has all the physical attributes you need and just can't seem to play quality football. Yeah, that that's a big question there. But again, sometimes coaches see something that they can coach up. Maybe that's what oh, yeah. Scott's maybe that's what Scott's seeing here. Fourth round pick, Troy Anderson, linebacker out of Montana State. Now, Troy Anderson is an interesting specimen because he's long. He's six foot four and 233 pounds. He's a hitter. That's his main that's it. That's his main thing that you look from him. And he has flashes of other things, but he still looks like he's a developing player. That's why he's he's so far back in this draft class. But I, I like the idea of getting a physical guy of someone who's fierce who's always going to change the change the, the you know change something with a big hit being physical against the run they need that guy for the future and maybe buddy johnson is that I, I don't think the steelers are sleeping on him at all but you can never have enough talented linebackers in the room as we've seen how the steelers have gotten hurt up at that position and been really limited there with marcus allen having to basically become a linebacker over the years what is your thought on getting troy anderson on this or this early day three pick here I got no problems with it because just like you said, I don't think the Steelers are giving up on Buddy Johnson, but I also don't think Buddy Johnson has done anything to solidify a role in Pittsburgh yet. I do think this is his season where he has an opportunity to do so. But again, like you said before, you can never have too many inside linebackers. The last two years, the Steelers defense has been riddled with injuries at inside linebacker. Miles Jack or Devin Bush goes down. You are now down to Robert Spillane, Marcus Allen. Yeah. Yeah. Those guys starting, you want options. You want good options. I, I like the pick. Yeah, I, I, I like that too there. Now, f- finishing things out, um, interesting picks here from Scott. Hassan Haskins as the sixth-round pick at 208, running back out of Michigan. Haskins, a uh, bigger, stronger type of, type of running back, runs in between the tackles, could be someone to spell – uh, to, 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 to spell Najee Harris a little bit and could be a guy to press Benny Snell and says, look, you say you run Benny Snell football. Well, someone else is going to come in and do it if you don't this year. So um, I, I, I'm interested there. Dylan Parham, guard out of Memphis with the first seventh round pick and then tight end Chase Allen out of Iowa State with the second with the second seventh round pick. But of, of all these picks here, I, I really think it's interesting how 
Scott addressed two important skill positions that there's question marks about right now. Like as much as everyone's excited about Akella Witherspoon, who by the way did officially sign over the weekend. I know a lot of people were worried about that happening. That's no longer your concern. This he is a Pittsburgh Steeler. Uh, but you have him, Levi Wallace, Cam Sutton, and eh, you're not so sure about cornerback after that, except for you know Arthur Mullet being in the slot. But you might want to guy. So that's where Andrew Booth comes in. Then Jahan Dotson. All you really know right now is Chase Claypool and Deontay Johnson. Ray Ray, Ray McLeod's at 49ers. So what you know, you, you're gonna you're gonna need bodies in there. So I think that's interesting there. Um, and like you said before about offensive tackle, you got Chooks, you got Dan Moore, and then you're in trouble. Uh, so I I think that Scott did a really interesting job here addressing some key needs for the Steelers, but all and, and finding when to address those needs. Because I'm sure there's some out there, Noah, who would prefer to address some of those trench needs earlier in the draft and say, you know what, go get a linebacker early, go get an offensive tackle or a, a guard or, you know, a running, you know, not a running back because they already did that, but you know, go get guys that can help the trenches sooner rather than later. It, what's the, what do you think should be the approach or the better approach that this, that might avail the Steelers uh, in this upcoming draft class? So I like this draft because it addresses the needs that make the Steelers a contender in 2022. I think that's the big thing. Like the Steelers have a lot of like, developmental pieces or pieces that are filled but not extremely dominant and this kind of just fills the rest of them it gives them a solid cornerback like a true cornerback one gives them a, a third wide receiver a backup tackle adds some depth at inside linebacker gives Najee Harris some help even even adds a third tight end and another swing guard with a lot of upside as a guy who played tight end for most of his college career and then changed to guard so I think it fills every single need here. And I think that's the Steelers' approaches. They're trying to win a Super Bowl in 2022. If this is what they got to do to get there, I mean, no issues. No issues. <laughs> that, that's that, I think that's the thing there is, tr is trying to get back to being a true Super Bowl contender some way, somehow. Th this upcoming season and they might not get to back to this season my, my whole thing is the Steelers need to be about keeping keeping the you know keeping true to the path you have you're on the on the, the the you're on the brink of having a truly elite defense you have a quarter at least a quarterback in Mitch Trubisky you think can at least hey don't turn the ball over play the system let the running game work if you fix the offensive line and you make the defense truly elite I can see this team being a, Ford, a San Francisco 49ers, a Tennessee Titans, a team that can run the ball first, defend at a better level than either of those teams did, and give yourself a chance to win with Mitch Trubisky not having to do too much. That's my blueprint for the Steelers. And then that way, Noah, next year, they could go get that quarterback because now you don't need four or five draft picks to fill important spots in your roster because you did it this year. Yep, I agree. And even if they do get a quarterback this year and they build all around Mitchell Trubisky and the philosophy that you just put out there, if they believe in a guy like Desmond Ritter or Matt Corral or Kenny Pickett or Malik Willis in that first round, and then next season they don't have to worry about a quarterback. I mean, if they don't, if they're not a Super Bowl team this year and they already have all their needs around a quarterback filled, they plug a quarterback in and then they go get more star power. That's team. That's team ready for a run. So I agree. 2023 is my big year for them. But I think that the this is the offseason. They make good strides to get there. I, I agree. I think that they they they've made good strides. You know, James Daniels is a guy who uh who, who looks like he could change he could change how the line of scrimmage works for the offensive line as a group. Um, yep. I'm really I'm really intrigued to see how you know Kendrick Green. Also, that's another note. Uh, Mike Tomlin did say that they're not they're not opposed to moving Kendrick Green to guard, which I'm sure a lot of Steelers fans are really happy to hear. So there's going to be a really interesting competition once we see mini camp open up and then eventually training camp to see. Who who's getting the pole position of the starting center spot to start it, and then who's all going to be pushing for it? Because the Steelers, the, it, no, there's no doubt they want Kendrick Green. I guess this is my last question for you for you here, Noah. There's no doubt that they want Kendrick Green to be a part of this equation. But how how involved does this guy get get to be this year after his struggling first year? I mean, there's no doubt that they want to let him give him a chance to fix it. But this is a team that I see that's like, look, man, they got went and got Mason Cole and J, J, James Daniels. I wouldn't rule against them still going and getting another guard type of player in this NFL draft, even in the earlier rounds. What how, what kind of ice is Kendrick Green on, or does his versatility buy him another two years of his rookie contract to prove who he is? Yeah, I think it still buys him some time. If anything, I think Kendrick – or not Kendrick Green, Kevin Dotson is on thinner ice than Kendrick Green is. Good I question think both right of there. those guys can go into – 
spring and training camp in the summer competing for that left guard position. And I think whoever wins it is obviously the favorite moving forward. And whoever doesn't win it is immediately a guy the Steelers could possibly move on from. I mean, the, obviously they need depth. They're not going to make any rash decisions, but I don't know. Kendrick Green had one bad year at a position that he's never played before. Kevin Agreed. Dotson should have been a star last season, wasn't a star, and then got hurt. So I think Kevin Dotson's the guy that's on thinner ice than Kendrick Green. I think they, they're still very high on Kendrick Green. He needs to play better at guard. I'm very worried about that. I don't know if he's going to, but he's got he's still got an opportunity. Certainly is an opportunity. We'll see how that plays out. Noah, thanks so much for joining us here on the Locked On Steelers podcast. You're a treasure to have. Let people know they can find you, follow you, and get more of your work. Yeah, no doubt. Follow me on Twitter uh, at Noah Strack, and you can find all my work at allsteelers.com or on YouTube at youtube.com slash allsteelerstalk. Do check Noah out. He does great work there. Thanks, Noah, for joining us. I'm Chris Carter, host of the Locked On Steelers podcast. You can find this show on Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, and YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit the like button on the video if you enjoyed it. Hit the, the subscribe button on our YouTube channel to get all of our daily content and our breaking news content that we sometimes release. Thanks again for watching the show. We'll be back, with tomorrow, we'll talk back tomorrow with more on your Pittsburgh Steelers right here on the Locked On Steelers podcast.